everyone. My name is Sheng Chen Li. I'm from Center for Digital Music, Mary University of London. Today, my presentation is about the tempo pattern representation for impressive performances. Uh, roughly a few topics I'm going to talk today. Firstly, a quick introduction, and then talking about the tempo pattern and how do we define the tempo pattern and how it might be useful. So in this presentation, I'm going to try to, uh, try to show that with some evidence uh, showing the tempo curves can be represented by tempo patterns and a statistic model for standardized tempo curves and a visualization scheme for tempo pattern representation in order to compare different ex expressive performances. First, we very quickly get through a few definitions. First one is tempo. I think most people are aware of what is tempo. Basically, it's the speed or piece of uh, sorry, pace of a given piece. And then, if we link the tempo value on each beat of a performance, we can get a tempo curve. Here, we show two pieces of expressive uh, expressive performances for the same piece of music. And we can see from here that there are some general shapes of over phrase we can find. Right. And uh, so if we if we if we yeah, here, here we go. If we find the same, uh, if we if we find the same shapes uh, of tempo curves and then find the centroid of the of the number of tempo curves that have sharing similar shapes, we got tempo patterns, which basically tells the shape of tempo variations across one phrase. If we use a particular color, like in previous slides. So this one is for blue, this one is for red. If we use a particular color to represent the tempo variation across each, fr each phrases, we get a colored bar that represents the expressive strategy of the different tempo patterns employed in a piece of performance. And if we have multiple performers playing the same piece of music, we got a tempo variation map, which can be used for the comparison of expressive strategy across different performers. So in this map, basically, each row uh, represents a piece of performer, uh, performance. And for each column, which represents the same uh, phrase of this piece of music, So, what does tempo patterns can be used for? It's quite straightforward for music, music analysis by uh, simplifying tempo variations to a limited number of patterns. And also, the tempo pattern will allow us to observe tempo variations at different levels of musical structure. Finally, it can help us to judge the effect of tempo pattern changes on human perception. But before uh, introducing how to define tempo patterns, I'd like to demonstrate first that people are actually aware of tempo patterns. I'm going to play two, two pieces of synthesized MIDIs. One is with expressive tempo patterns, the other one is without expressive tempo changes. So here we go. <laughs> judge that which one has tempo patterns, which one is not. So particularly I designed a listening test to demonstrate that the tempo pattern perception, that I, our audiences are aware of tempo patterns existence. 
So basically, e each time we give two pieces of synthesized media and ask people to distinguish which media has temporal patterns, which one has no expressive temporal changes. And also, we ask a uh, performance score uh, to the audience that which pieces of MIDI they perform and ask them to give in a scale from 1 to 5. 1 means strongly perform no tempo change and the 5 basically perform a temp the, the MIDI with tempo patterns. As a comparison basically for each uh, different question of test, we synthesize the MIDI in a different way by employing different number of tempo patterns. So here we see that with more tempo patterns employed, audiences are easier and easier to get which synthesized media has tempo changes. And oh, but on the other hand, if we see the tempo, perf uh, tempo pattern performance score here, because we are scaling that from one to five, so three is pretty much in the middle, and also it's a kind of falling down with more and more patterns employed. But if we see the variance of the performance score, we can see it's kind of people are treating this kind of MIDI very differently. Some are very prefer the tempo patterned one, and the others basically prefer no expressive one. Uh, it might be because the way the, the, the synthesized MIDI may affect on the uh, perception, because if we organize the tempo patterns in a horrible way, which obviously would suggest that uh, audiences will perform the synthesized MIDI without any expressive tempo changes. Secondly, we, we also designed another listening test to demonstrate that uh, the te tempo patterns correlate with people's perception. We ask a group of professional pianists to pick the most variable and least variable performance from three randomly chosen performances of the same piece of music. And then we, we use a number to describe, based on tempo patterns, to describe how variable of a performance is. Basically, this formula E uh, represents the average Euclidean distance uh, for the normalized tempo patterns employed in a piece of expressive performance. So the results shown here that we give two different types of TVCs. One is basically based on the tempo curves, so basically it's based on the original tempo curves. And the TVC gives a temp uh, based on the tempo patterns, which is a dictionary of tempo patterns we employed. And the larger sign basically means here means that performance two is more variable than performance seven, and performance seven is more variable than performance fifteen. And we see that the TVC value is pretty much correlates with the listener's opinion, with a few exceptions here, which generally say that the tempo pattern is a valid concept based on these sets of listening tests. Then we go very quickly about how to uh, define the tempo patterns. Uh, to define a tempo patterns, we need a mathematical model that describing that how the in-phrase tempo is distributed in an n-dimensional space. So here I show four kinds of mathematical models. Three of them is non-clustered, and one of them is clustered. And uh, basically, in this diagram, the bottom means the local minimum of a phrase, and the top line means the local maximum of a phrase. And uh, the first the uniform distribution, assuming that performers randomly vary the tempo within a range. And the constant speed model suggests that the performer keeps uh, trying to keep the constant speed over a phrase and varies on each different beat. And this is generally a Gaussian model. And the, the grand average uh, party model basically suggests that the piano is trying to always employ the same grand average pattern over a phrase and with some covariance matrix applied, which is another single Gaussian model. And finally, we got a uh, clustered model, which is mixture of Gaussian model.
which is a quite common model we use. If we use a leave one out uh, test uh, to test the model likelihood, uh, we can see here that the non-clustered models is is perform the, the performance of non-clustered model is not very good. And if we see the likelihood test of the uh, Gaussian mixture model, we can see that from the from the uh, num uh, we see number of Gaussian components increases. The likelihood for test database kind of falling down after a component's range is between 5 and 10. So roughly, at least from our testing database, uh, there are 5 or 10 type of patterns which can fo successfully form a dictionary that dis describes the expressive strategy. So, with the mathematical models, we can define temporal patterns and which introduce the temporal part pattern representation here. Again, we see this diagram, which is we, we basically choose a medium number of uh, how many temporal patterns we have within a database. So this is the eight temporal pattern dictionary, and this is temporal variegation with eight colors. And if we use the color block to annotate this musical score, and we can see basically a different representation for different present performances. Uh, I, I basically choose two uh, expressive performances that differ from each other quite a lot, and we can see that how different uh, performance strategy they use and how it sounds like. So I'll play the uh, left hand side performance first. <laughs> which makes the expressive performance is quite such different. In fact, if we go back to see the temporal variegation map here, uh, the, the left-hand side one is performance number 21. So if we see this block, or see the sequence of temporal patterns it, it employs, it uses quite a lot of red and orange one, which effectively is the ending arcs here. And if we see the right-hand side one, which is performer 12, we can see it uses a lot of light blue, cyan, and yellow, which effectively, basically, from this dictionary, is kind of some medium or more smooth uh, tempo curves. Not, not, not smooth, basically, it's just the medium or the balanced arcs here. So, if we um, give statistic point of view for the different performers, we can basically get a summary of this kind of diagram, which says that how many patterns are employed by different performers. So, uh, continue with previous example, we can see that performer 21 here, the distribution is quite different from the common uh, st expressive strategy, and for performer 12, we can see the medium part is pretty much larger than the others. 
So which basically can give a clue that is is this a particular way or some kind of suggestion for the further analysis about performance identification. Also, if we call, uh, if we see the statistics of this temporal variegation map from another point of view, if we calculate that on each different uh, phrases, how many temple or how many uh, types uh, of temporal patterns employed, we can get this kind of diagram, which shows, for example, in fact, that's quite clear, uh, reflect the musical structure. For example, here, phrase nine, which most people use a beginning arcs, and only one people use a medium arcs. And for this one, uh, phrase 25, most, basically everybody is using a beginning arcs. And for phrase 32, everybody, oh, in fact, it's, it's almost rich agreement, everybody uses ending arcs, which effectively effects on, can reflect the musical structure uh, for, for the particular piece of music. So the temporal pattern representation basically can support some further analysis for the musicology research. And finally, some acknowledgement thanks for the Chinese Scholarship Council for funding myself and the thanks my supervisor, Professor Elaine Chu, Mark Plumley, and Dr. Don Black. Thank you very much.